won't be long before the beatings begin. Now there's no Abu Talib to protect us. And nowhere to go. Bilal, right? Yes. Do I? I'm Bara. I came last year with 12 others to hear the Prophet. Ah, from Yathrib, yes! We follow Islam now, with all our hearts. You hear that? Twelve believers in Yathrib. No, hundreds. The Prophet must come to Yathrib. We need... We can't talk now. The Messenger of God will meet you on the hill at El Aqaba tonight. Messenger of God, please, say you'll come to Yathrib. Our city is filled with bloodshed, brother fighting brother. Only you and your message can bring peace. Say you'll come. If you do, we promise to protect and defend you. God has opened a door, O Messenger of God. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, accepted. And he instructed all of us to leave for Yathrib. I'm too scared to leave at night. The messenger of God doesn't want anyone to know we're leaving. Why couldn't we leave with everyone else? Shh. We couldn't all leave at the same time. It'd be too dangerous. It's time. Muhammad stayed to protect those who were left behind. Now, it's time for us to decide what to do with Muhammad. Throw him in prison. No, exile the man. Yes, yes! Take him to the edge of the desert and drop him off. Let him go. He's out of Mecca. Isn't that what we've wanted? Not if he's going to build an empire in Yathrib. Well, what if we kill him? Huh? Whoever kills him will be attacked by Muhammad's clan and others. Who will, will be the one? Who said it must be just one? Take one strong man from each clan and kill him together. That way the blood of Muhammad will be on everyone's hands. Then there can be no revenge. <laughs> Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, knew of their plot. And on that night he asked his cousin Ali, God's blessings be upon him, to sleep in the Prophet's bed, knowing no harm would come to him. there. When do we go in? We don't. We wait until he leaves the house for his morning prayers. Then... As the night drew on, the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, prayed. And one by one, the assassins fell asleep. Together they left Mecca and hid in a nearby mountain cave. Are you all waiting here for Muhammad? I passed him hours ago on his way out of town. 
That's impossible! Huh? Where is he? One hundred camels to the man who finds him! Go! I'm sure. In a few hours, your hundred camels will be mine. See any footprints? Oh, he's in there. There's no way he could have gotten in here without breaking up this web or this nest! You fool! Later that night, before leaving for Yathrib, the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, looked down on Mecca. It was a city filled with memories for him, where his children were born, where his wife had died. He said, Of all God's earth, thou art the dearest place unto me, and the nearest unto God. And had not my people driven me out, I would not have left thee. No man can survive this long in the desert. Maybe the reports are wrong. Maybe he was caught after all. He wasn't captured. And he will be here. He is coming! The prophet is coming! For the first time, we were able to worship without fear. The days were long and filled with hard work, but oh, we were happy. Now be good, Huda. Mind your teacher. Come on, Hadi. I'm gonna stay here and help Papa and Malik build the mosque. After your lesson, the prophet says you must learn to read. Lessons first. Plenty. 
for my children's teacher. It's beautiful. Messenger of God, let me carry that. You're the prophet. It's time for you to take a rest. The prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, taught us that all Muslims were brothers and sisters, one community standing shoulder to shoulder in prayer. And he wrote a document declaring all people in Yathrib would live as equals, in peace, regardless of race or religion. What is it? He's calling us to prayer. Mama, are we the happiest people who ever lived? <laughs> what do you think? I think, yes, because... Yathrib was renamed the city of the prophet, El Medina. Ah, that's it. Everything the Muslims left behind has been accounted for. Good. We'll take it all on our caravan to Damascus and trade every last scrap of it. It belongs to us now. They have taken all our possessions. And after they sell them in Damascus, they'll be on their way back to Mecca with baskets full of gold. They continue to cut off trade to us, and we are starving again. Oh, messenger of God, I know you hate violence, but... And then the prophet, peace and blessing upon him, said, we will go out and meet the caravan and take back what is ours. Muhammad has left Medina with 300 men to take this caravan. Ride to Mecca. Tell them to send an army as fast as they can to protect these riches. <laughs> Turn here and take the sea route back home. Our army leaves this morning, and you are going to fight in my place. I won't do it. Fight for me. And I'll consider your dead pay. Refuse, and I'll kill you here on the spot. But I, uh... uh... <clears throat> Persist! Finally. Abu Jahl is just two days' march from the Muslim camp. Tell him I'm out of danger and to turn back. But he has them outnumbered. Three to one. Not good enough. Not against Muhammad. Tell him to turn back to Mecca. By all the gods, I have not come this far to turn back. No, not until Muhammad is dead. When the prophet peace and blessing be upon him, found out we were no longer facing 30 armed escorts, but an entire army. He called for Shura, the council of his people. I guess I am the last to speak. Whatever you choose, we will do. Then the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, go forward full of faith, for God has promised either the caravan or victory on the battlefield. We met the Meccan army at the Wells of Badr. Have my spears ready. Stay close to me, and above all, Help me find Bilal. 
The battle began according to tradition. Hamza took up his sword and called two to join him.